Long-lasting battery is the most important factor for Android users, and by extension, developers should care about it too. While we want to achieve reliable battery life for Android, apps should have some flexibility to run in the background. The platform needs to provide consistent restrictions as guardrail to prevent a few misbehaving apps from draining the battery. This is important such that you can design your apps to run consistently across devices. At the same time, users should have some control and visibility to app battery usage. How does Android balance these considerations? From Android Lollipop to P, the platform has introduced a series of features that aim to offer power management based on three main dimensions. Firstly, device idle state, or how long the device has been unplugged and with screen off. The device could enter those where all apps cannot acquire wake locks. No job services and sync adapters can be run. You are likely familiar with this already. The second one is based on giving users control and visibility. There are a couple of relevant features. In Android P, Battery Saver has been enhanced for users who want to have extended battery life over everything else, possibly at the expense of some feature degradation, such as restricted location services during screen off. Users can turn this on anytime or set it to turn on automatically when the device drops below a certain threshold. So developers should account for these restrictions and test against them. There are times when apps might be too aggressive in acquiring wake locks, or in general doing things that are considered bad for battery drain. New in P, there's the background restrictions feature. Based on Android Vitals, the device monitors and detects apps that demonstrate known bad behaviors and flags to the users who can then choose to restrict these apps from running jobs, alarms, background services, and so on. Most users only use a small number of installed apps regularly. When you think about it, the total number of installed apps on a device really should have no correlation to battery life. The third dimension aims to tackle this issue based on app usage patterns. In Android P, the system can, in a fine-grained way, apply restrictions to apps that haven't been used recently. Apps are classified into five buckets, ranging from active to never. We call them app standby buckets. Apps that haven't been actively used for a certain time would be put into an appropriate lower bucket. Accordingly, the system would progressively defer app tasks such as alarms, jobs, and network access. Further, the system uses machine learning techniques from DeepMind to intelligently move apps between buckets in order to achieve the highest efficiency, and it gets better over time. Device manufacturers can adopt this ML model, implement their own, or use the AOSP algorithm. Various battery management features boil down to restrictions and deferred access to some combination of background tasks. For developers, therefore, it's important to test against these restricted scenarios. Let's go over some design and testing best practices. Ensure proper testing over a range of increasing restrictions. ADB commands are available to simulate the conditions. You can simulate those using these commands. You can also exit these states through similar commands available in the developer docs. How do you test against app standby buckets? Since it's based on user behaviors, which can vary, expect your apps be moved between buckets. Always assume that your jobs and alarms will be deferred and ensure that your design can work under those restrictions. The good thing is that most apps would be fine if they are already following best practices, such as using jobs or targeting at least API level 26. Also note that in the frequent and rare app standby buckets, high priority Firebase Cloud messages are kept, and any messages beyond the threshold will be treated as normal priority, which could be delayed when the device enters those. Again, test against these conditions thoroughly. You can use a couple of ADB commands to set and retrieve buckets for your package. Before running them, make sure your device is unplugged. There's also framework APIs to get an app's current bucket. Or you can use Usage Stats Manager to query the list of events associated with your app, which includes bucket changes. Want to test under battery saver conditions? Yep, there are ADB commands for that.
If your app uses location, for example, you can use this method to verify how your app behaves when it loses location services during screen off. When Battery Saver is turned on, you can further save battery by entering your UI's dark theme, if available. You can either check for this mode explicitly or respond to a broadcast. In the event you need to refactor existing background services, in most cases, the new Work Manager API can be used to fulfill many use cases. Use only foreground services for user-triggered actions and that users expect them to run immediately, such as music playback. By the way, it's good practice to also include a stop affordance in the, in the notification. We've talked about some design and testing best practices. During development and post-launch, there's a couple of related tools. The Energy Profiler is a new feature available in Android Studio 3.2, currently on the Canary channel. After you deploy your app to a connected device, the profiler shows a live timeline of how your app uses system resources, such as partial wake logs, wake up, alarms, jobs, and location requests. The profiler also estimates your app's energy usage of CPU, network, and location resources. Refer to Energy Profiler documentation for more details. In the Play Developer Console, Android Vitals exposes performance metrics that are tightly associated with battery usage, which includes excessive wakeups, stuck wake logs, and background network access. Refer to Vitals documentation for more detail. With standard ways to manage power-intensive tasks and with proper testing, developers can create apps that work consistently across devices and collectively can achieve good battery life for users. To learn more about these features and tools, check out links below. Thanks for watching.